Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. This is still a beautiful Monday here in the studio and it's time for our top story. Now in case you did not know, our Muslim brothers and sisters have been fasting for the past one month. Ramadan is the ninth month in the Muslim calendar and it is the holiest month. It is the month where they're supposed to be fasting, but a lot of people do not understand what happens during Ramadan, why people observe Ramadan. But there's someone here who will break it down for us step by step. He's someone who participated in the Ramadan fast, a Muslim devotee. His name mm -hmm. is Ayo Shoyon. But thank you very much for joining us, Ayo. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so now we're talking about Ramadan. A lot of people don't understand what Ramadan is. It's a period of fast, yes. but why do you fast during Ramadan? Um, well, firstly, um, Ramadan is uh, the holy month where Almighty Allah enjoins or commands Muslims, all Muslims, and they're not just Muslims, believing Muslims, to fast. And it has time, you know, from daylight to dawn. And also, um, it has so many importance. It has a goal. It has a, it's just basically from like, all, all ye who, uh, who believe fast as, as fast as it has been prescribed for people before you. So it's not actually, it did not start now. It started way before us, way, the, I mean, the Muslims before us and also prophets before us so that we can what we can get, we can be more pious, we can get closer to Almighty Allah, which is God. Okay, great. So now there's a fasting period. You said yes. from... Sunlight, so sunlight to, to sunset. From, day from daylight to, to dawn. dawn. Yes. Okay, so that means I think it's called suho and ifta. Yes, what, that's. I've heard those terms okay, before. Can yes. you please break it down? The, because the, 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 right, sahur, the sahur is sahur, um, yeah. when, when you eat. I mean, you are, you, are, you are told to eat in the morning. That's when the daylight is from, as it is now, from uh, anytime from 2 12 to. Do you five, mean 2 a.m.? I mean 2 a.m. I'm just saying okay. 2 a.m. to 5, uh, 5, 10. That's 10 minutes past 5. That is the sahur. Okay. You are expected to eat. The list of it is just make sure you have something, maybe water or something. Drink water. So that's, that's sahur. If you, that's if when you're you eating. Yes, if you can't eat, just take water. Ensure you take something. All right. Then from then the, um, 5 a.m., you don't eat anything five, until ten, yes, by 10 the, after 5. Yes, yes. 10 after 5. Till 2 a.m. the next no, day. No, no, no. Till um, 5, ten, uh, no, till um, last 7. It's not okay. like 7 like that. We have to say till so, uh, dawn. Okay. So yes, basically, I think it's till sunset when, the, when yes, we don't see sunset, the sun again. When there's no, yes. In case you're watching us and you want to be a part of this conversation, if you were a Muslim and you participated in the fast, Please call us, share your experience with us. How did you feel the first day? Did you feel like fainting? Because as a Christian, I had participated in our fast, and by like the second day, I felt like fainting, to be oh honest. My. And if you call us, our first caller for the day gets to win this very beautiful hamper before us. It's well packaged. You can see how big it is. There are lots of stuff. This is our way of telling you, well done for participating in the fast. Now, during the... Okay, basically, here in Nigeria, people mm. get to break around... Say seven because that's when the sun yes, sets. The but in countries outside Nigeria, like in the UK, yeah. where the sun extends to like 9 p.m., where they're experiencing the summer solstice at some period, yeah. some people do not have to, they are not able to break up On until nine. nine yes. So please, can you talk about the importance of drinking water during the Ramadan fast? Yes, uh, I, I will start by, in that way, I'll, I'll explain by, I mean, I'll start by talking about the, the fasting itself is not uh, almighty Allah said it is not to punish you okay because if you say you wouldn't want to eat i can i think i'm strong enough to you know but he has enforced or he has made it compulsory just make sure you take water so that we you can you can have the strength. much blessing the strength to carry you all along now you said that um almighty allah has commanded that yes. fasting takes place during this period. Is that is it compulsory? It's, because some I've heard someone say it's one of the five fasting is one of the five tenets of Islam. Yes, um, five pillars of Islam. Five pillars of Islam. Yes, it, it's uh, it's uh, actually the fourth. The fourth, okay. Is the fourth. So you are. What are the, the other ones? I think yes, the other ones you have your faith, which is uh, having faith in Almighty Allah. You have your salat, you have your salat, and you have uh, your you have your uh, zakat too, and you have your uh, hajj. And you have the fasting, which is Ramadan. Okay. You know, Ramadan comes before Hajj. Hajj is the last thing. 
and it is not like compulsory, but for people who are rich enough to afford to it. To afford it. Okay, so if you can afford hard, you don't have to go. If you can afford hard, you can't go, but it's mm. not a must. Yes. But fasting is but a Ramadan must. is a must for Muslims, believing, believing Muslims. Muslims. Are yes. there any exemptions? What if the person is sick yes. or the person is old? And yes. the person can fast, can they be exempted? Yes, there are exemptions. Okay. You know, if you are sick, you are exempted. You have that's why before the fasting you are ex, you are expected to go for checkups or if you know what I mean your health status or something. Then also for menstruating women or ladies as we can put it. Yes. And also nursing mothers. Nursing mothers are not supposed to fast, but if you feel you have the strength, then you can, you can go, go ahead. ahead. Then uh, a traveler as well. If you're traveling a long distance, you are not expected to fast, even though you can you can pay back. All right. We have our first caller for the day, and the one who has won our hamper. Hello, here today. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling us, and congratulations. You just won our hamper. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. All right. Are you Muslim? Um, yes, I was a Muslim, but okay. now I'm a Christian because I got married to a Christian. Okay. But actually, I've, I, you know, my, all my Muslim life been like 25 years. Okay. It's somehow. You fasted. It's, the fasting is all very good. Starting from the, you know, the first day, the third day, it's always going smoothly. Especially, but when there's sun in the afternoon, oh my God, you okay. feel as if you should get something to drink, oh. which you can't. <laughs> Okay. But at times, you know, you just move on like, yes, the faith is there. You carry it till the dawn. All then right. Can... Well done, Yetunde. And um, did you practice Ramadan fast all through your years as a Muslim? I, I didn't because I'm pregnant. So pregnant okay. women and nothing more that doesn't fast during Ramadan. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Yetunde. Please kindly call us back to drop your details, your full name, and your contact address so that we can reach out to you with your hamper. Thank you very right. much for Thank calling. Thank you so much. All right, I'm ranking to everybody. All right, yeah. I'm going to come to you too. Yeah. So um, she talked about her experience. She said by the second day, by the time the sun is out, she feels mm. drained, like she's about to faint. Yeah. Did you experience the same thing? Yes, sure. It's, uh, it's a normal thing. But do you yeah. get used to it along the, along the way? Yes, you have to get used to it. I mean, you have to. That's part of um, the teachings, just to give you some personal, I mean, strength, making you be able to, like, um, hold yourself, control your self-control, and the likes of it. So I know that another reason why this fast is important is, like you said, to draw mm. close to Allah yeah. and to, ex to help Muslims, believe in Muslims, to exercise self-control because yeah. self-control is one of the things that are being taught, the yes. things that are being preached. Yes, yes. How easy was it for you, knowing that we live in a city of Lagos where you are mm. driving and somebody is trying to overtake you, there are people are annoying you at that time. How were you able to manage your emotions during this period of Ramadan? Uh, well, uh, personally, you know, it's something I've been doing for a very long time since I was um, um, very young, and uh, so I'm used to it. And also, as a Muslim, you are, you know, we don't just act. You know, there's some. You have been told that during this fast, you face, you experience some, so many frustrations and the likes. But always come back to the thought that I am fasting for a purpose, and it is to 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 get myself closer to my God. So right. whatever it is you face. You just um, bear, I mean, you bear with it. Right. And also, like, there's a point where... We'll, we'll come back to the whole other right. Let's hear from Falasha Day. Good afternoon, Falasha Day. Hello. Hi, Falasha Day. Good afternoon. I'm fine. Can you please turn down the volume of the TV set so we can communicate properly? Okay. All right. So, Falasha Day, did you, are you a Muslim? Yes. You haven't turned down the volume of your TV sets. I can hear myself. I might need to disconnect you if you don't do that, please. Okay. All right. So, did you did you fast? Yes. And how was it for you? It was fine. Did you you didn't feel tired at any point? No. So did you do the whole one month? Yes. Wow, bravo! I'm proud of you. Well done, Falasha Day. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. And um, Ramadan Karim, that's how it's said, right? Yeah, Ramadan Karim Ramadan. to you. Okay, so let's get back to you. You talked about the fact that people already have been forewarned that yeah. during the fast, there will be yeah, trials yeah, and there will be tribulations, yeah. frustrations that would yeah. tend to, um, to, to affect your emotions. Yes. Okay, we'll talk more about that, but let's hear from our next caller. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Hi, please, can you turn on the volume of your TV set? Hi, please, can you turn on the volume of your TV set? I can hear myself. All right. All right, thank you very much. How are you? Are you Muslim? No, I'm a Christian. Okay, what well, you want to, want to contribute? Yes, please. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, well, I, I, I'd love to. I'd love to wish my brothers in the other religion um, happy Ramadan, Karim. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All and right. And fo funny enough, I can see my senior there. Oh, I he's a senior in school. I met you, Yombo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Very interesting. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hi. Oh. All right. It's, it's a pleasure to see you. Happy Ramadan, Karim. Yeah, hello, welcome. Ho hopefully, he oh. would invite you over to his house to come and eat. Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much for calling. We'll come to the um, celebrations part. Right. Okay, now, people that are not Muslims who are dealing with you as Muslims, what do you expect of them? For example, I'm a Christian. I don't mm. understand much about... Um, now I understand about Ramadan, but mm -hmm. in the event I did not know much about Ramadan, mm -hmm. what do you, how do you expect me to act around you? What are the things I can do to help you in your spiritual journey during the Ramadan period? Well, it's, um, first of all, it's about um, tolerance because during Ramadan, you're so, I mean, you're meant to be in a very low, if I can put it that way, you know, you need to be very connected to your God. So at times you see somebody who is, usually active or who is the type that is everywhere and all of a sudden it becomes sober. maybe sober or you know in his own world and you tend to be like maybe he's trying to you can misinterpret but if you understand what the religion or what the you know this uh, whole season is all about then you'll be able to like you know accept or, or see the person or understand the person better if I can put it yes. that way so you just allow the person in whatever way you can allow him be I don't think I don't think there's any other thing you can do but just to allow him be and also if there's any way you can there's some things you know you should not do because we are meant to help each other because at times we are, we are humans we can tend to forget or you know like maybe listening to music or you know all these things that you've been told to abstain from or to just do without. So basically, they need to understand yes, that don't, they, they, don't, they should not try to tempt you. Don't, tempt, don't try yes. to tempt their emotions. If you're not a Muslim, yes. it doesn't matter. But don't try to tempt their emotions during the period of the fast. Yes. Don't push them to the world. Don't try to get on their nerves. And if they are quiet, don't assume that they are ignoring you. They are in a sober, holy mood. And please respect that. Talking about respecting emotions and respecting and um, tolerating other people's beliefs. In mm. Iraq, I took a story during Foreign Focus. Mm. In Iraq, some people, the so-called Islamic State uh, militants, attacked the people of Iraq just okay. when they're about wrapping up Ramadan. And they killed people. Some families were wiped out. How are people supposed... Now, these people, a lot of them claim that they are mm. promoting Islam. And we know that they're not promoting Islam. They're pro promoting terrorism. If you are promoting Islam, should you be fighting during the Ramadan period, even if you wanted to fight? Shouldn't you wait for Ramadan to be over? Yes. So basically, uh, people need to understand that these people are not Muslims. These people who are promoting terrorism, they are not promos promoting the Islamic religion. So as much as possible, let's try to be very, very understanding and not assume that all Muslims are uh, as in support of terrorism. Because from what I know, Islam is a religion of peace. And I really appreciate that you came to talk to us. Thank you very Finally, much. how do they celebrate Eid al-Fitri? This is Eid al-Fitri. This is Eid al-Fitri, yes. the end of Ramadan. Ramadan yes. How is it celebrated? Do you kill Ram? No. Ah, so what do you kill? Oh, this is just uh, the normal, there's no ram here. The, the, the next one is the ram, which is the Eid al Hadda, or you call it Eid al Mubarak. Okay. That's the uh, festival of uh, killing ram. But this is just, you go to your this is a normal practice, you go to the mosque or your, uh, your open ground in the morning, you observe um, some two rakat of, of prayer, then go hang out with your friends, your family, marry. So no killing of ram? No. If you, want, if you have the money, you okay, can. Okay, you have the it money, but it's not like, compulsory. No, no, no. Will you kill you, Ram so that I can come Personally, no. You will not kill Ram. Yes. I'm not coming in here. <laughs> Please, in case you are going to kill Ram, follow me on Instagram at Oliver Modi and send me a message. I'm coming to eat Ram. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I've been speaking with Ayo Shoyom, Ahmed Shoyombo, yeah, and he is a Muslim devotee who participated in the Ramadan fast. Congratulations to as many of our Muslim brothers who participated in the fast and as many who were exempted by due reason. We have a short video that would highlight the importance of Ramadan. Enjoy.